It all got started for me with a three-year apprenticeship with P.A. Pug Moore of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. He was an almost legendary craftsman in the area, and I was thrilled to be able to work with him during those early years. We mostly made 18th century furniture together, reproductions of some of the finest antiques of that era, like this sculptural mahogany Queen Anne armchair, among many others. Then my wife and I moved north to New Hampshire, where I took my traditional roots and started to spread my wings with new designs using veneer, almost like paint. I love this mahogany ribbon figure, arranging it in a sunburst pattern on this sideboard. And on this tall clock, having the ribbon be radiant around the face, almost like the beams of the sun. Here's a couple custom side chairs, again using solid mahogany and ribbon cut veneer. I experimented quite a bit with dramatic use of veneer in mixed forms, but it all changed when I went with a terraced look on the top of this table using lobes and each layer was slightly higher. I used the technique on this wing chair as well, a contemporary version of the old wingback chairs. On the back, there's this red splash of Amboina burl and the ribbon figured uh, sweeping arcs of Cuban mahogany. This desk features that ribbon cut figure in a dramatic way. Some have commented the use of mahogany veneer in this way resembles muscle. On this smooth surface of this chest on chest, I tried to use a variety of woods, Macore, Amboina Burl, and again the Cuban mahogany. Here's a detail of the lower center of that piece. Note the ebony lines. This was a banquette made to encircle a round mahogany table. Each of the sections were meant to come together when pushed in and create a mahogany ring around the top. Here's another easy chair, this time in Wenge and Macassar Ebony, but I did something different on this one. I wanted to accentuate the texture of the material by wire brushing it, removing the softer growth rings, creating a wonderfully tactile surface that feels great on your fingertips as they rolled around the front of this edge. And also use that technique on this bed, which was chestnut, made to appear to be like a woven basket, again textured to give this realistic effect of a basket weave. These days, I'm back in my shop, mostly teaching, and my teaching endeavors have led to a position hosting the public television's classic woodworking. We would film that in the shop, and it was pretty exciting to have a film crew there. But I also teach with more common pieces, mostly shaker, where we feature dovetailed pieces and shaker end tables like this one. For more on our classes, go to epicwoodworking.com.